It is the morning after, the morning before. That being Bethesda's conference didn't start until three in the bloody morning. Oh, that's the one thing that's always annoying about the about covering the three conferences. Sony's one is always in God knows when on the Monday morning or Tuesday morning, depending on perspective. The Bethesda conference started off quite well. They had this very long pre-show, this half an hour long pre-show, which is basically just them talking about all of the stuff that happened last year. I'm not entirely sure if that was really a wise idea, simply because they ended up showing stuff for like things like uh, uh, Elder Scrolls Legends, which is their collectible card game thing. They ended up showing a lot of the stuff of the games that they already that everyone already knew already. So it also it sort of took away from the impact from the rest of the conference because they ended up repeating themselves at some points, which was meh. As for the introduction for the main show proper, their introduction was a reboot of Quake. Quake Champions, um, which is very, very interesting. They made a big deal of it being uh, being being uh, uh, unlocked uh, 120 frames, which I can't help but think, who's that for? Most people use the game for only for all the for the 1080 160. It's most people use the game just for having a very big screen that runs 60 frames. That's what my one does. The only reason why they're doing that is because, for one, it's Quake. And Quake, even when it originally came out way back when, was was a game that was built on graphical fidelity, graphical power. It was built on to be the most graphically superior game out there at the time. The problem is with Quake is that the original games have aged woefully. The games look terrible now, because back then the polygon graphics now are very aged. The color palette for for the game is just brown and beige. It's terrible, almost a preamble to the modern shooter of the, of the 2000s, I suppose. Having Quake base itself on graphical superiority is not new. Um, problem is, is that the games back then aged woefully because they spent so much time on that um, yeah but it seems to be just a multiplayer one the bit the thing that everyone liked the story campaign was just bays going from castle to castle but yeah it's, it's uh, they made a big thing about East about quake being onto eSports and then they did generally they didn't really say that say that much stuff the trailer that they had was a literal pre-rendered cutscene thing trailer pre-rendered trailer thing it wasn't even gameplay obviously um, and that was it, saving all the other stuff for QuakeCon. That that came up a lot, saving for QuakeCon. That came up quite a lot because uh, Elder Scrolls Legends um, got some more stuff. I uh, got some more talk about it. They showed the actual gameplay for it now, the actual way it's played. Every, every single time they started talking about the gameplay, I couldn't help but think, this is kind of like a mixture of uh, Hearthstone. And Mojang scrolls. Hmm. Is this is the re is this the reason why you really made a big stink about Mojang scrolls, huh? It's big alleyway style thing of two lanes, two, two lanes of attacking the main person. Hmm. It's a simplified yet more complex version of scrolls and Hearthstone. Hmm. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that turns out. They're going to be talking about it a lot more at, at QuakeCon. Uh, then they talked about some of the more Fallout DLCs. They talked. They gave the uh, the three next Fallout DLCs. The first one is a contraptions add-on, which is purely just for making like contraptions in machines, like Rube Goldberg machines and things like that. It seems quite interesting. Uh, the second one everyone seems to like, which is the Vault Tech one which is where you can actually make your own vault, which is very good. And the first thing I thought, when, uh, when even when they started showing it off, they showed it on, on with the Siren view, like in Fallout Shelter. The first thing that went through my mind is, ah, that is why you made Fallout Shelter then. This has been long in the making. And then the last one was a theme park style thing called Nuka World, or I think it was called Nuka World. I'm assuming it's called Nuka World. It's just like, have a it's time to book your vacation. And there's this big Nuka World, Nuka Cola theme park thing. So, 
Yeah, that sort of thing. Then they went on to giving so, talk about some of the updates. It's coming from to Fallout Shelter. It's a free game, so it's probably going to get some of the updates. But it's also coming to PC. I wonder if you, I wonder if you have to pay for that because a lot of the app games when they go from mobile to PC, it's usually the microtransactions get taken out, but then it stops being free. A lot, a lot of the time, anyway. They could just do it free and keep the microtransactions. So um. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what type of transition they're going to do. Then came the one that was uh, long, pretty obvious that was going to happen. They're not going to spend like the whole pre-show talking about Skyrim and then not do it. Uh, the Skyrim HD coming to Xbox One, uh, Xbox One, PS4, and PC. So the Skyrim HD edition. Okay, it's Skyrim HD. It's not going to be that much, but one thing that I thought was quite good for it is that the consoles are getting mod support for Skyrim HD, which is very good. That means you now have Skyrim mods on uh, consoles as well. Uh, so it means that Bethesda is helping getting mods to the consoles through Fallout 4, and um, by I think it's next year, I think when it comes out, is also for the Skyrim HD edition. This next bit had me mixed for a few, um, had sort of a mixed reaction from a few people because it's Prey. Not Prey 2, Prey. They're doing a reboot of Prey. It only came out a couple of years back. Um, I know it didn't do that well, I think. Commercially, anyway. Critically, it seemed to be quite all right, but yeah, it's very weird. They started doing Prey 2. They even talked about Prey 2 a couple of years back. And now they decided to scrap the entire thing and just do a new Prey completely and just reboot the entire thing which has me huh. I was quite intrigued by the um, by the other one because it's very Blade Runner-y very noir -y and shooty and shooty and stuff it's very, it, it seemed quite interesting then they just dropped the entire thing altogether and just gone for this quite normal sci-fi story which is um, yeah I wonder what happened I, want, I, I really can't help but wonder what actually happened to actually cancel Prey because they've just cancelled Prey 2 to do a reboot of the original Prey so yeah I can't help but wonder what 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 got them to cancel Prey 2 that's the interesting one that's the interesting one um, some people who like the original Prey ones it seems it's and with the with the reboot with the change it has a mixed reaction among some of the fans I've seen on YouTube and on on, on on Twitter and online and stuff. So, yeah. And then they came on to talk about Doom. I know they're going to talk about Doom. Doom is the, um, well, one of the big games that they have at the moment. And, uh, yeah, they did talk about DLC. Because the first thing they talked about was updates to the Doom snap map, the map creator tool thing, uh, where they're going to be adding more objects, enemies, game modes, blue -de -blue, -de blue general updates to the snap map, adding more stuff, it's good for the map makers, uh, and then they talked about the first map pack DLC that they have, it's three maps, plus um, a new game mode, well it's, not, it's not, not necessarily a new game mode, but it's a new monster to play as, a new demon to play as, in the, um, when you get possessed by the demon and stuff like that, but so then this next point was quite interesting, because they're making the first level of Doom, free but for only this week which is weird because doom like the original doom was built on shareware where they had the six levels and then the first two were free and you can just share them around as basically the free demo and then um, buy it afterwards but they're only doing it for one week as as soon as they said ah oh, the first doom level is going to be free for anyone to play, to try out. It's like, oh, that's interesting, going back to the old shareware days. And then and they went, oh, but only for this week. Like, why? Why? It's, there's not much point of it being free then, is it? Could have just called it the shareware demo and gone for the retro crowd. Very briefly, when they talked about Elder Scrolls Online, they kept on saying, Elder Scrolls Online voted the best MMO of 2015. Every single critic on Twitter was going, who the fuck said it was the best MMO of 2015? And I kind of agree. The only thing that I remember being, being talked about when Elder Scrolls Online came out 
was everyone ripping it apart because at times it was badly balanced people just blazed through the entire story and had nothing to do it was people ripped it apart because it was a bit buggy a bit shit and then they're going oh it's the best MMO of 2015 so who the fuck said that it's interesting that they never actually cited a source for that one they just said best MMO of 2015 the one sort of big bit of news that is well, was not necessarily that big for the rest of us but big for some people is uh, Elder Scrolls Online is going to Japan on June 18th uh, no on, on uh, June 20th actually I wrote it down yeah on uh, June 20th it is going to have a uh, Japanese release so people of Japan can uh, join in the MMO fun I think they must have waited it out to see uh, to test the market to see if it's actually viable and then they talked about the two DLCs which are coming to it um, there's the Dark Brotherhood DLC which is coming on Tuesday everyone knew about that one um, which is just the Assassin's Stebby Stebby bloody bloody thing but then this next one is interesting this next one is very interesting because it's the one Tamriel DLC add-on pack thing and essentially it removes environment levels and connects it to player leveling which means that the difficulty of the enemies are connected to your player level rather than it being like a level 20 area a level 30 area it's essentially you can go you can start the game and go anywhere and fight anyone because envi environment enemies and things like that are connected to your level rather than the preset level which I don't understand why the one thing that an MMO has is essentially grind it's you trying to get to the high level to get to the high level areas that's what the MMO is it's a lot of grind but they're getting rid of the grind completely so you can go absolutely anywhere which may seem fun but then it's like thinking, it, there's no point then. There's no point of going off to the highest, highest level areas, the highest level stuff, because you can go anywhere and then do that, which means that the only thing that is going to be of worth, uh, or, or the only reason to have a reason to go and to the high level areas and get the gear and get all this stuff is for PvP. But they didn't say anything about the PvP. I don't think I don't think anyone liked the PvP. And then they went on to VR. Bethesda VR. Bethesda is now moving into the VR space with um, teaming up with the uh, HTC Vive with Steam, uh, which is yeah, pretty good. It's pretty obvious what that was going to happen there. Um, but the interesting things were is that they're saying that there are two games that are coming out. One is basically this Doom tour thing where you can take a tour of hell and monsters and things with Doom, which is uh, quite fun. You can basically got Doom, but also Fallout Fallout 4 is coming out in VR next year. It's, it's going to push a lot of people on uh, into getting a Vive because Fallout 4 is huge and it's going to be a very massive experience. But the thing that I, the one problem that I can see them having is that you're not going to be able to just do the free roam aspect of Fallout 4 because well, you don't have like several miles of area do you so there has to be some control of character movement which means it's just going to be the headset with the controller I can guess I, I can see the I, 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 I can see them using the handheld controller things and checking uh, checking the pit boy in the arm and all that sort of stuff but that means you're going to be doing the whole teleport thing with the with the VR bits because you can't move unless you're going to use the d-pad on the thumb as it so yeah that's going to be the one thing that's probably going to dent the immersion is that the only way you can move is via essentially thumb stick because you don't have several miles of a room so it may sound like an absolutely amazing thing but it still it still is limited hubris is the one thing that VR always has so pessimism is probably the best thing to go for it because you're never going to have a perpetual um, in-depth ex experience with things like Fallout simply because at some point 
you are going to have to just stand there and go around with a, with a D-pad or an analog stick or something because this simply is not the room. So, yeah, that's going to be it's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see that side of it. Otherwise, it's just going to be first-person shooter thing. I, I wonder how they're going to do the whole change gun thing because you can do the flick back for the guns or pit boy equip bang bang thing. So, yeah. It should be interesting seeing that. It will be interesting to see how much of an impact uh, having Fallout 4 and VR actually has on things like the Vive and VR. The whole last section was just on Dishonored. Dishonored 2, where they made a whole big thing. They made a big thing of the new engine that they have, the Void engine, which I can't help but feel, what was the point? I don't really care what the, what the engine it's made of. Oh, but look, game so fancy. It looks so fancy. Yeah, so the game can look great and still be shit. It's, it's <laughs> having a game look absolutely amazing and have high frame rate still doesn't mean that the game's going to be fun. So having them make a whole big deal of Void Engine is, is not necessarily bad. It's just pointless. The first thing they said is, oh look, you can have, you can see some gameplay, and then proceeded to show a cutscene. Yeah. Then it's like, oh, and here's more gameplay. No, it was edited. There wasn't even a HUD. The person was moving around like gameplay. It wasn't even a HUD. So, right, we have edited stuff. Well done. Not gameplay either. And, we and then they went, oh look, it's look at the gameplay. And they actually did show gameplay then. So. Third time's the charm. <laughs> Third time's the charm for actually doing what they bloody say. Seems fun. They went through the new powers because uh, you can now play as uh, Emily, Corvo's daughter. You can now play as her. She has her own slew of powers. Corvo, you, um, you can choose to play as Corvo or Emily. Uh, they both have different powers. They showed off Emily's powers, which included uh, Shadow Run, where you can turn into a shadow. And <laughs> the one interesting thing that I saw from it. That uh, one interesting thing that um, was in the gameplay stuff was the time jumping mechanic because the time jump the time jumping mechanic is it's you use a machine basically a uh, time shard shield thing where you have basically like this gyroscope thing connected to these three shards that you hold up and you, when you look through them you see if you're in the present you see the past and if you're past if you're in the past you see the present and you can use the machine jump forward and backward through time and dodge guard patrols stab up guards while you're there and so you can sit there just watch guards go by and then jump through the past while they're not looking and go through that seems very interesting because it's it's a limiting aspect to stealth is that your vision is limited to just that window which is well, which helps the stealth. It's not doesn't not, not going to make you superly overpowered, but it it, it, it adds to the stealth because essentially it, it becomes a stealth section afterwards. That was quite interesting. I quite like that bit. That that bit that bit was the one standout thing for it. Because otherwise, it's more dishonored. That's pretty much it. Not really much else to really say about it. It's just more dishonored. They showed off the Dishonored Two Collector's Edition, which has got Corvo mask and all sort of stuff. Oh look, you get all this special stuff when you pre-order. Oh I see. Oh I see. Pre-order. Pre-order. Get shit. Loading the stuff, loading the connect collectors edition stuff is now just going, oh look, pre-order the game and get the special stuff. It's like, yeah, but I still may be left with a shit game. So, eh, rather wait. So the Bethesda conference was it was alright. It wasn't definitely wasn't as big as last year. Last year, the Bethesda conference is basically the Fallout 4 conference, but it had a lot of stuff to show, because it was going, look. And Fallout 4, and it comes out in three months. It was like, oh, oh fucking hell. And they had a lot of stuff to show. This year, not so much. Otherwise, not that much happened. It's the. Uh, talked about some of the DLC, talked about some of the updates. Oh, look, we're doing Quake. Are we going to show you anything? No. With the Elder Scrolls Legends. Here's, here's what the basic gameplay is. Doesn't that make that Hearthstone? Yes. They didn't have that much to show off this year. And the stuff that they do have to show, show off this year, they're saving for QuakeCon. So, yay! So, Bethesda, still good, just not as big as last year. <laughs>